has they're a survivor of someone they've lost to violent crime. The yep, next young lady I'm gonna bring up, and first off, I, I'm gonna apologize because we are totally out of our time for praying. Totally. But we're gonna let it do what it do. The next young lady I'd like to call to the microphone though. I've been working along with her for a while. She's an author, a mother, an amazing individual. That's the least I can say about this young lady. But in 1991, her world was literally turned upside down by a situation that not only did she hear about, but she witnessed. So I'm gonna to call to the mic my close friend and partner in the struggle, Ms. Danielle Richardson. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. I must say, this is the best community I've been to. And I've spoke over dozens and dozens and dozens, but the privilege to see the whole Walmart Law, John Dollar family here, I am impressed and I love it. Um, first thing I would like to see to the family of the, the bar and God's family, I keep you in your prayers. Amen. I know too well what you're going through and how you feel. And I can't say that the pain is going to be over in a day or a week or two or years. Uh -huh. Because like in 1991, June 18, 1991, I was a child living in a domestic violence household from the time I was four until the time I was 16. I saw my mom beaten, put guns to her head, and ultimately I was in a struggle trying to save her life after a stepdad stabbed her 37 times. Where she lost her life in that, in that battle. But it was in a few days later, he can take the pain that what he had done, and he ended his life. Hmm. So my brothers and I, we lost a parent, both parents, within a matter of three weeks. That left us in a world where we knew nothing on how to survive. But before my mom left this world, she taught me one main important thing that I always should love by, and that was faith and to believe in God. And at that time, that was the only thing that I had was my spirit, faith in the Lord. And for over many years, I went through depression, different mental illness, <laughs> suffered from PTSD, and been on every type of nerve medicine that they can possibly can give me that prescribed by a doctor. But nothing, no medicine of no kind can ever take away the sight and the pain that I felt from witnessing my mother die. You know, as a child, you know, you don't supposed to become the protector of your parents. But for me, being the oldest in my family, that was my role, to be protected, to make sure everyone was all right. And I felt that I had failed because I had let my mom die. Even though I was just a child and it was not out of my control. But as I got older, and I realized once I got into the church that I only could do what I could do at that time. But the Lord had prepared me to be able to do a bigger and better mission. And that was to be able to stand here before you all, not just to tell you my testimony, but to let you know that domestic violence is not a private family matter. Amen. Amen. And it's not a private family matter when you walking outside your doors and you have bruises and you can't see and you have to keep telling lies upon lies and saying that well this happened or I fell down the stairs or I broke my ankle. That's not a private family matter anymore because people are seeing. They know it was happening. But as a community I ask to stand in front of you. When you see those things, don't brush it off as being a family, a private family matter or that just going on in so and so house. Because what goes on in so-and-so house is going on in your community. Right. 
And when you don't speak on it, when you don't talk about it, you don't recognize it, or you don't be there for that person, when that deadly day comes, it's not only going to look bad for that family, but it looks bad for that community. So everybody wants to know, well, well, where was so-and-so when that was happening? Oh, ain't nobody know that this was happening to that person. But everybody knew. Everybody just didn't sit to see them. So when my mom was going through what she was going through, we love her mom a lot of people. A lot of people knew what was going on. But they choose to say, well, that's their business. We ain't going to worry about it. Now, in these days of time when we got a state that's number one in the nation, we are what, 50 states? And South Carolina is number one in domestic violence. So that means out of every five women, these three of them being beaten. Mm. At least one of them going to get killed. And at least the other one going to have children who are sitting here witnessing mm -hmm. the death, the struggle, the life. And then that child was going to grow up thinking that, well, I seen my grandmama getting beaten. I seen my mama getting beaten. So it's okay for me to get beaten because that's how he loves me. And you can't have that. Not only that, we have to teach our children how to love one another inside our household so they can learn how to love each other when they get outside the household. We have to make sure that this world is the love of life has got to love, love all the time. You know, if you see someone next door and they're going through stuff, and you see their they children going through it, because you know the children going through it if the mom and the daddy going through it. Sometimes you might can't get to the mama and the daddy, but the children, they always looking for an outlet. They always looking for somebody to talk to. So I know when I was in school, there was plenty of times when I cried upon my friends and close family members. Like I can't go home. I walk around downtown, up and down King Street and Meeting Street all day long until next time to come home because I didn't want to go face what I had to face at night. Mm. So just imagine in your community kids who walking back and forth in the neighborhoods in the dark because they don't want to go home because they don't want to face what's going home. And that is the time when you see that, don't ignore it. You go to them, you ask them what kind of help you can. You know, some people you can't make face, you know, say, hey, I know you're being abused, let me help you, because a lot of time when people are in that situation, they don't, not saying that they don't want to help, they just don't want to be ashamed. So that don't mean turn your back on them just because they, you can't get to them and you can't reach them at that time. But now, today, that they have people like my sister's house, Real Mad, Project Unity, different organizations that have ways of privately helping people. And those times, my mama didn't have those outlets. And for me to be able to stand here and to be able to talk, I feel good that I'm helping see my mama once again every time I try to see one of you all. To take the initiative as a community, when you leave here today, that I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. I am my grandmother's keeper. I am my next door's keeper. Because what happens to me happens to the whole community. What happens to you happens to the whole community. Right now, it's, it's um, February. And since August of last year, we had 22 people murdered from domestic violence. Mm. Some were men, women, and some were children. Some, right now, they got the crazy mess going on with tax money. The people killing their whole family over a tax refund. Mm. Over a few thousand dollars that gonna be spent in a month. No, no, no. Children are, are being taken out of this world. Yeah. We got mm. to do better. Yes. Now, I've been in a fight over these last few years and months we've been going through with going back and forth to Columbia fighting to get some of the domestic violence laws to be able to change. And right now we got the bill number three that's out. And we have some senators that feel that we we need guns. We got the right to carry guns. So we gonna carry guns and we want to carry guns and if you know somebody get killed, hey, that's our second amendment right. 
But if you got abusers out here who already been in jail for CDB constantly, do you allow them to have to keep carrying the same guns that you know that they're going to use to kill their spouse? Well, we're trying to get that law to change, and we need to each and every one of y'all to start calling into the senators and into the into Columbia and emailing them so they can vote to be able to pass this law so they can take the, can, the guns out of the hands of these abusers. But also, we want to be able to help you. We need our advocates. They need better equipment and things so they can be able to help these domestic violence victims. Because a lot of times we have shelters and we have a lot of community outlets where they can go at. But a lot of times a lot of people are afraid of getting turned down because of certain things. So they don't think they have enough money to be able to get out of this situation. But they are help out here, and we got to make sure that we are known and be available to say that, hey, we are here to help you. Amen. We don't have to go through this alone. Amen. So when you, when you see my sister house, or Real Bad, or Project Unity, or any one of these groups, they come out here and they, they're speaking, or you see they have something going, support them, because they are here to be able to help you. Yes. Not all of them are victims, but there are people who are saying that they are, they are tired. They are pissed, they are mad because they're tired of seeing these women getting killed or beaten or these children going through things over and over and over again. And I want to uh, close out and sit down and let somebody else have a mic. I want y'all to be able to take a pledge in the heart. You know, when you go out and you, when you know what's going on, you see something going on, reach out and help that next person. Even if they just tell you that, just give them a hug and say, I love you. That I love you, I give you that carry more powerful, more heartfelt, more than words can ever explain. <coughs> you love that neighbor because the Lord says so. Amen. And thank you, and I thank you for your time. And also, you know, think of me. I was a child who grew up in this stuff. So a child who closed their own mama eyes before a quarter of you can come. I was a child who was raised basically on your own, a child who adopted her younger brothers so, so that they can be able to have a peace. Mm. My now a person is here to tell you your story so that one day that you can be able to help change somebody else. Amen. Thank you. Amen.